the 62-year-old Johannesburg Planetarium is being transformed into a world-class digital research, training and science engagement facility. It will become the Witz Anglo-American Digital Dome, providing access to a cutting-edge 360-degree visual experience. Let's find out more from the director of the Witz Center for Astrophysics, Professor Roger Dean. Thank you so much, Professor Dean, for joining us this evening. Firstly, can you tell us about the technology that will be available to the public at this upgraded planetarium? Yes, so we're, we're really excited to convert from our 62-year-old analog uh, star projector to digital projectors. Um, we will have the final configuration to be decided, but a large number of digital, high-power digital projectors that will all be illuminating this 360-degree dome and be, in a, uh, be able to project any kind of image. Um, so it'll be an IMAX-like uh, experience, but in 360 degrees, of course, with all the benefit of the, um, the wonderful uh, uh, scientific engagement that one can do with uh, uh, researchers right on the Wits campus. So I remember, and, and I think many um, people will remember going to the planetarium during their school years. For me, that was many, many years ago. Um, and, and, you know, it was quite basic. So what kind of visual experience uh, can visitors expect? Paint us a picture. It is, it is, quite, a, it is quite a thing. That it seems a, a, a very um, clear memory to so many people the first time they walked into a planetarium. And even though a planetarium in, in from, you know, built in the 1930s to the 1960s, they tend to, all they were able to really do is show about a few tens of 8,000, in our case, pinpoints of light on the inner dome, which basically project the um, the brightest star in our brightest stars in our night sky, and then they also show the planets. What we the fundamental change here is that instead of just observing that from a static position, you're now able to launch into the universe. You're able to go into orbit around other planets and perhaps see what what the stars look like from from there. You're able to dive into the early universe and explore, you know, conditions around the, the earliest galaxies and stars and black holes as they form. Um, and you'll be able to look at star birth. Uh, you know, we do these incredible simulations of all these things at the moment. And we, uh, we've got amazing telescopes that are capturing data uh, that just give us a, a completely transformed view of the universe compared to when these first analog star projectors were di designed about 100 years ago. But what we're really excited about is this will still retain its heritage as a planetarium, but we're calling it a digital dome because there's such, once you have that capability, you're able to use it in a far broader range of applications. So we're extremely excited in this sort of digital playground we'll be able to test all sorts of things, um, whether it's looking at biodiversity and its change uh, over time, whether we're exploring under the oceans, whether we're mapping out other planets. There's just a, a whole range of different applications that are extremely excited to, to try out. So as we leap forward in terms of technological advances um, and, and the, the masses of data that are going to be generated and, and will need to be analyzed and will become available to people, what kind of doors does this new facility open in terms of research specifically? Yes, so, you know, so many of our scientific disciplines are now very much data driven. We live in a data driven era um, and the onset of machine learning in which you see in our, your daily life, you know, through use of, you know, on social media, whether some of these things running on your on your smartphone, we're the, we're applying those to to many scientific disciplines as well to try and deal with this with this deluge of data. So it, it becomes a lot more intuitive to deal with this, uh, visualize some of these effects, the data itself and the, the, um, what the algorithms are actually doing in a particular scientific application on a grand scale, especially if you think about um, um, very, very large data sets like we'll have with a square kilometer array, getting a researcher uh, to immerse themselves in that on a 20 meter dome is just a lot more conducive to understanding that data in a more effective way than compared to in your laptop. That then translates to postgraduate training as well. You know, we've got 
you know, bright young students coming in, and they will be able to have a far more intuitive sense of this um, on this on this really grand scale in this this high tech facility. It sounds incredibly immersive and very exciting, but it is a phased approach to this upgrade. So when can we look forward to the first opening? So last night we had our groundbreaking event, which was the announcement of funding for stage one and stage two. So stage one is the digitalization of the auditorium, the projectors that I was talking about, and the high performance computing that is required to drive that. We will have a science and technology exploratorium in the foyer of the old 60 62 year old building um, and then there's a north wing expansion and there we will place a whole lot of meeting space and um, constant um, creation capabilities um, as well as a seminar room and what we what we want there is basically a space where we can drive the academic program that is being delivered in the auditorium stage three is unfunded but that is going to be a lot more research focused for for large research teams to spend extended periods a week long few week long periods in that facility um, and uh, spend a whole lot of time on the dome and work with in-house experts that are able to pipe this you know scientific idea plus data onto dome and visualization techniques that that whole that whole sequence is requires a whole range of different multidisciplinary um, expertise and a lot of scientific disciplines require a whole range of, of multidisciplinary expertise as well in order to achieve their goals so we want to put all of that in in one space which is stage three and we're uh, actively working on the, con the continued fundraising for that so the South African Astronomical Observatory in Cape Town is the oldest permanent observatory in the Southern Hemisphere. That turned 200 in 2020. And of course, South Africa's involvement in the SKA project really makes us an international player when it comes to cutting edge astronomy. But so where do we feature now? Where does this transformation uh, of the old planetarium place us in terms of international competitiveness? Yes, I mean, the, the history of astronomy in, in South Africa um, has, has strongly leveraged our, our strategic geographic advantage. You know, we've had clear skies and a clear view of the center of our Milky Way down here in Southern Africa. So um, this is, you know, was a lot of the motivation for these observatories and a lot of the motivation for um, citing these major, major um, facilities here on, on South African soil. So upgrading the planetarium to something like a world-class facility uh, that, that we've envisioned is, is fantastic for, for several reasons. We've discussed some of the research, but one of the things we really want to be doing is attracting young people into science, um, attracting them into not just astronomy, but a whole range of scientific engineering um, degrees and, and looking at, you know, diversifying a whole range of specialist skills. I think we've seen in recent times just how important um, problem solvers and scientists are in, in, in dealing with glo global and, and, and national challenges. So we we want to position it to, to attract more um, young people to come through that and see, see just how much exciting science is happening around the country. And this will be a nexus for it in, in, in Johannesburg. Well, we certainly are very excited for you. Thank you very much for speaking to us. That was Director of the Witt Center for Astrophysics, Professor Roger Dean.